This is Advanced Grammar Fundamentals for a Pluralistic Society, Module 2, where we look at the language samples of kindergartners and first graders. I'm Dr. Kate Crowley, created this with my co-authors, Dr. Donna Valenti, Grace Sang, and Kristen Guest. Thanks very much to the families and students who allowed us to make these videos and use them on an online course. Um, we blurred the students' faces for a little more privacy. We also allowed them to choose their names. So we have a Goku, we have a Jojo, we have a Super Cat, and we do have a Batman. Here are the SLAM materials that I use to elicit language in my evaluations, and I encourage you to download these at leadersproject.org. In New York, we have subways, so this works for 80% of the kids I evaluate. Um, what happened, and you can see how the receptive skills must get a more um, deeper in order to understand these questions. What happened? How did it happen? Did this ever happen to you? Sometimes we elicit a personal narrative from that, usually about 60 or 70 percent of the time. And then this question which is quite difficult. What would you do if this happened to you? So it's asking a hypothetical question. We use Bunny Goes to School and Dog Comes Home in this. These two are matched for four years old through early elementary. Um, they are language elicitation required, so if the kids don't put them in the right syntax, just help them. I've used this. I have my adults do them when I'm doing professional development trainings or teaching my graduate program. And every time, somebody doesn't quite get them in order, so it's not evidence of a sequencing problem. But then we ask them to tell the story, and then we ask, which is narrative, and then we ask these deeper expository questions. Also, we look at pragmatic and social language because there's always theory of mind and there's always perspective taking. And they have to make inferences, problem solve, synthesis, make synthesis, and, and um, also evaluate. Dog Comes Home is a similar kind of story. Again, it's matched. Um, girl sees this adorable little dog under the porch. She is, they love each other immediately. She remembers thought bubble. The mom says, do not bring no dogs at our house. So she does a gesture to tell them to be quiet. They come home. You notice the little girl's getting dirtier. Um, there's that little tail in the blue bag. The mom says, get in there and take a bath. The next thing we have, the girl is dirty. The bath is dirty. There's footprints and the dog is pretty much white. Again, everything is available at leadersproject.org. You just search SLAM and you'll find everything. I'm going to look at these three kids. First is Margarita. She's a bilingual kindergarten student, age five years, eight months old. She was born in the Bronx. Her, Bronx, her family's from Mexico. She got Spanish until she went to pre-K, and then it was all English. Dominant language of the home continues to be Spanish, 90% Spanish, 10% English. Her parents' highest degree level of education is a high school degree from Mexico. She has no history of speech and language problems, but there, there are concerns about her younger brother. She's reported to be in the top five of her class and is reading at a first grade level. She's at or above grade level in math. Parent, teachers report that there's some weakness in comprehension and critical thinking. Now that was interesting to me, but when you see this girl, you'll see there's no problem in comprehension. What would you do if this happened to you? No problem. And critical thinking, I think what the teachers may be seeing is second language acquisition and they're missing that because so many teachers don't have that knowledge base so they attribute it to more of a, a delay or disorder when it's there's none of this so let's look at the subway because when, when the door was was actually closing then he put his feet because he wanted to get in the train i saw that that the hand was stuck in the door let's analyze some of those sentences it happened in this way is an independent clause what happened it happened in this way. That's your independent clause inferred by say, what happened? Or why did you do that? Well, because bah, 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 bah. you don't need, I did that. The independent clause is inferred. Um, it happened in this way. That's your independent clause. Then we have a dependent clause because he put his feet. Um, and then that's uh, cause and effect. Then we have another dependent adverbial clause indicating time when the door was actually closing because he wanted to get in the train. So in this little sentence by her, we have a complex sentence with an independent clause and three dependent adverbial clauses. Another sentence I saw is an independent clause that the hand was stuck in the door is a dependent noun clause. Remember from module one, how do you know whether it's a noun clause? You can substitute it. I saw it. Here's Bunny Goes to School. Um, let's see how she does. 
Yes. The first thing is when he he gets his backpack and he gets ready to go to school first. And here, um, the teacher was calling his mom because the the bunny pops out of his backpack, and he's bringing him to home because his mom said he can't bring um the bunny to school because he can. He, he might get lost and he might hop everywhere. Here's our sentence. Um, the first thing is, so that's your independent clause. When he gets his backpack is a dependent noun clause. First thing is it. And he gets ready to go to school. That's another dependent compound noun clause. So the noun clause has two noun clauses. The first thing is it when he gets his backpack. The first thing is it, he gets ready to go to school. Um, and here, the teacher was calling his mom, independent clause, because the bunny pops out of his backpack. Dependent adverbial clause indicating cause and effect, complex sentence. Independent clause, he's bringing him to home. Now, before we move forward, she would be seen by, she's all English, no E and L for her, to home, Spanish speakers, or those who, uh, a casa. So there's always that preposition, a casa. So we do have second language influence going on with this girl, even though she receives no ENL support. She may not need it, but that's why I think the teachers are made a mistake of thinking there were comprehension and critical thinking problems. I think there's probably some second language acquisition issues still going on, even though she's doing so beautifully in school. Because his mom says, is your independent adverbial clause, his mom says it. His mom says he can't bring the bunny to school. He can't bring the bunny to school is your dependent noun clause. Because he might get lost, that's your independent, um, that's your dependent adverbial cause and effect. And he might hop everywhere. So we have another dependent compound adverbial clause. This is a very complex sentence that she's able to put together for us. Um, okay, super cat. She's six and a half years old and in the first grade, she's strongly dominant in English but has exposure to Puerto Rican Spanish from her grandmother. Both parents were born in the U.S. and the primary language at home is English unless the grandmother is present. The grandmother lives nearby and visits regularly and cared for Supercat during the day before she started preschool. Her father reports Supercat's language is surprisingly strong and she is well-spoken. Teacher reports she's performing at or above grade level in reading and math. Okay, let's see the subway. Um, when the door open, um, we'll try to get somebody out there. Um, something got stuck in the in the door. So here's a couple of sentences. Independent clause. What would you do? I would. What would you do if this happened to you? Your hypothetical. Here she holds the the verb tense and tells us what she would do in that situation. Talk about perspective taking. That also is looking at not just syntax, but pragmatic social language. I would try to get somebody out there. That's your independent clause when the door opened. Uh, that's your dependent adverbial clause indicating time. Again, we're talking about a kid who's probably exposed to ver varieties of English. I'm not going to start looking at that. Um, third person singular S at the end, Brown's morphemes, because I it's sort of uninteresting to me because I can't tell whether it's dialectal variation or it's a disorder. But I mean, if you uh, if you look at the work by Joanne Paradis, uh, Paradis, you will see 2005, she has another one in 2010, and from on there, going on from there, that shows that with second language acquisition, the features of specific language impairment or developmental language disorders that were so classic for peoples of stand, people of stand, who speak only standard American, general American, mainstream American English, that those, those morphological indicators can look exactly like second language acquisition. So I want to be super careful with hit super cat. <laughs> Something got stuck in the door. Beautiful sentence, independent clause. Now let's look at Bunny Goes to School. Um, when the, 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 um, the teacher was teaching class, he tried to get out, and then when the third part, it jumped out of the bag, and then he think, um to get a carrot, and then he, he got her, her and then um, he bring them back home. Who's that? Um... The girl 
um, who took the bunny out. Okay, some beautiful sentences. He tried to get out. What happened? He tried to get out. It's your independent clause, dependent adverbial clause indicating time. When the teacher was teaching class, he tried to get out. Let's see if we can put that at the end of the sentence. He tried to get out when the teacher was teaching the class. Yes, we can. We know it's a dependent adverbial clause. The next sentence, when it jumped out of the bag. Here's a dependent adverbial clause indicating time. And he think to get a carrot. Here's your dependent clause. Then he got her. Independent clause, and he bring them back home. So two independent clauses. Um, don't get hung up on the morphology or the lack of, that she used a regularization of the past tense bring instead of brought. Go back to module one and have a look at, at uh, Southern White English. She doesn't speak that, but many varieties of English regularize the irregular tense. And as Dr. Donna Valenti would say, I'd raise a flag, not a red flag, but a celebratory flag, because she has acquired the rules of grammar. She's, she knows that you form the past tense by adding ed. And the, the uh, irregular past tense is just something that you, it, it's something you add on. It's not an acquisition. It's, it's a learned, cognitively learned word, as opposed to a language acquired feature, which is uh, says there's nothing wrong with her language acquisition device. Okay, who's that? Okay. Independ independent clauses, that is the girl. And then we have a relative clause, who took the bunny out, a dependent relative clause modifying the noun girl. Um, there we go, complex sentence. And the last girl we're going to look at is Jojo. Jojo's a six and a half year old, six to five month old girl. She's in first grade. She's a sequential bilingual, having only had Spanish exposure when she's at the age of four, when she attended a monolingual English preschool. A lot of that going around. Mother reported Jojo was unclear in Spanish and began, became, began experiencing many difficulties expressing herself when English was introduced. In addition, her mother rates her Spanish skills as below the expressive abilities of her peers and cousins. Both parents are from El Salvador and neither attended college and are reported to be highly invested in education and concern for their daughter. Mother reports she has difficulties understanding Jojo and that Jojo speaks mostly English. You'll see that. Jojo's teachers are attentive. They were the ones who suggested an initial evaluation and her family is stable and supportive. Her parents report that she is performing below grade level and with reading and math at the mid-kindergarten level. She is in a CTT class, meaning there's a special ed teacher and a general ed teacher and a certain percentage of the kids, usually under 50%, have IEPs and the rest do not. And she's an IEP for speech and language services. Um, a lot of this background information, you couldn't do a good evaluation without it. Um, they are from the Critical Questions, which is also available at leadersproject.org. It's a parent interview form. Okay, we do Dog Comes Home. Remember, dog and bunny are comparable. A dog is hiding. Her mom said, go in the shower. A cat washing. ¿Y por qué pone la niña el perrito en su bolsa? Because her wanted to get home. So with Jojo, you can really feel something about her syntax that seems choppy. It doesn't find, seem as cohesive. Things are not flowing together in the same way. A girl found a dog. It's an independent clause, a simple sentence. A dog is hiding. Independent clause, simple sentence. A girl got the dog. Independent clause and coordinating conjunction. A girl want to get the dog is lost. Now, I just want you to look at that to get the dog is lost. Remember, she's a Spanish speaker. It may be that she's struggling with word order to get the lost dog. So she's having some real trouble with word order. It could be second language acquisition or it could be a language disorder or both. Um, the examiner says, we encouraged her to use Spanish. It wasn't happening. Y porque la niña pone el perrito en su carro, en su bolsa. And the, the inferred independent clause is she put the puppy in her bag. Um, and the girl says, because she wanted to get, he, her wanted to get home. Okay. Um, so you put the puppy in the bag is your independent clause. And because her wanted to get home is your dependent and verbial clause. Check that out. The her. Why use her instead of she? Again, it's Spanish influenced because her and she 
they use the, the same pronoun in Spanish, which is ella. So she's just using the same pronoun from Spanish for both her and she. In this case, it would be she. Again, second language acquisition. <clears throat> Here we go. Another independent clause. Her put the dog in a bag. Then there's a false start. We don't worry about it. I've had lots of false starts, I'm sure, during this webinar. Um, the mom said, now here's a simple dependent noun clause, which is that quote. The mom said, go in a shower and a girl washing. It's an independent clause. So, yes, we found a noun clause, but uh, there's a lot of, um, we're still missing that integration. Now, some of you may say, well, what about the a girl and a shower instead of the girl and the shower? She does use the dog and the mom. Probably she could benefit from some dynamic assessments. So you pick, have a bunch of books. You say, give me the red book. She gives you the red book. Okay, give me a book. She gives you a book. You put the red book back. She said, said give, me the, give me the red book. She does it again. Okay, give me the book. And she gives you, hopefully, the red book. And then we go over to pencils. We do the same thing. So probably something very simple for her to learn. She's already almost acquired it. So that's the end of this module. Please um, feel free to go to module one, where we look at the fundamentals and the research on listing and analyzing complex language structures. And module three, where we analyze third and fourth grade language samples. And we do a little bit of information of where, what you can look for for um, for treatment for complex therapy, but of course that's not what the purpose of, purpose of this webinar was. We are due to finish these all and then do the online assessment. Truly a skill-building task, we hope. Thank you so much.